Ableton Live has two primary workspaces and we will be working with both of them throughout this course. So let's take a look at the Ableton Live manual to see what they have to say. So this is the Ableton Live manual. We're in the chapter called Live Concepts, which you can see right here. And if you go down to the third point, it says Arrangement and Session. And that's the name of both of the workspaces or views as Ableton likes to call them in Ableton Live. We have Arrangement view and Session view. A live set consists of two environments that can hold clips. And it says up here, the basic musical building blocks of live are called clips, which we will get into in a later module. So it says the arrangement is a layout of clips along a musical timeline. And the session is a real time oriented launching base for clips. Now that might sound very confusing at first if you don't know what it's talking about. So let me just give you an idea of what that actually means. So up here in the top right hand corner, you can see we have two selectors. One has horizontal lines, which is the one that is selected right now. And below it, we have a selector with vertical lines. The one with horizontal lines represents arrangement view, which we are in right now. And the one below with the vertical lines represents session view. So let's take a closer look at arrangement view. This is the view that pretty much all DAWs or digital audio workstations have in common. And it is really reminiscent of traditional studio recording spaces where you would record to multi-track tape. So for those of you that don't know what recording to multi-track tape means, let me just show you real quick. If you just type in multi-track recording into Wikipedia, you'll find this long history of what multi-track recording is. But let's just take a look at this machine right here. This is a Tascam 85 16B analog tape recorder, and it was possible to record up to 16 audio tracks using this machine. Now, originally when people started recording, they were only able to record one mic and everyone had to play together at once, which had severe limitations. It, it had a certain charm to it, obviously, but had very, very severe limitations in terms of production. And then throughout the years, um, more and more tracks became available. Uh, and like I said, this particular machine was able to record up to 16 tracks at once in a session. And the way it worked was you had this uh, reel with magnetic tape on it and you would uh, run it through here onto this other reel. And then when you recorded, this tape head right here would record up to 16 different tracks in parallel along the width of the tape. And you can see these tracks are represented down here in these meters. See one, two, three, all the way to eight. And then the bottom row goes all the way up to 16, representing the 16 tracks. And this was revolutionary at the time. And come to think of it, it still is pretty revolutionary that you can record all of these different things either at once or also overdub in the studio. I don't even know how much one of these machines were, but they were really extremely expensive which meant that most people weren't able to access this technology unless you had a major record deal or your parents were a millionaire or something like that. So now if we just go back to Ableton Live, you can see right here, I just set this up earlier, we have 16 tracks. As you can see, it says one audio, two audio, all the way down to 16. So the horizontal lines in arrangement view represent the tracks just as they did in the Tascam tape recorder right here. You can't see them, but they're there. So this means that, you know, we can go in and say record a guitar on this track. And then once we've done that, we can go back and then we can record the drums uh, and then the bass, and then we can record the main vocal and uh, backing vocals and so on and so forth all the way down here. And depending on what the computer is that you have, you can just continuously add tracks as much as you want until your CPU maxes out. So like I said, this axis right here represents uh, the tracks. And then down here on this bottom row, you can see the um, horizontal axis represents time. So this goes up to three minutes and 20, which we can see right here. And at the very top right here, this represents the bar numbers. So this goes up to bar 101. So you can pretty much say that this is a linear recording process. You would hit record and just start recording along this line and then eventually you would stop and then you would go in and just record the next part linearly just in one take all the way to the end. You could punch in for those of you that know a bit about production, but it was very much a linear process. And that really is what makes arrangement view 
arrangement view. And like I said, this is the view that uh, you will find in most other DAWs. Like Cubase, for instance, if you just take a closer look here, you'll also see the horizontal lines which represent the different tracks. Here we have Logic Pro, the same thing. You'll see the horizontal lines representing the different tracks. And last but not least, I'll just show you Fruity Loops, which also represents the uh, tracks horizontally. So this is very much something that is common to, uh, within all DAWs. So now let's take a look at the other workspace, which is known as Session View. So let's just go up here into the top right hand corner and click these vertical lines. And now we have Session View. So Session View really consists of two parts. Let's take a look at the bottom part first. This part right here is really reminiscent of a mixing desk. So for those of you that aren't aware of what a traditional mixing desk looks like, let's just go over here and type in mixing desk into Google. We'll go to images. And here you can see a plethora of different mixing desks. So let's just click on any of them. So this is a, a traditional mixing desk. And as you can see down here, we have faders. Each of these vertical lines represents a track. So just remember what this looks like down here, this bottom part with the faders. And if I switch back to Ableton, you can see right here, we also have our faders. And we have other things that are used in mixing desks, like this is for panning left to right for this particular track. And then we have mute buttons, solo buttons, and this is called arming the track, which you can see now my voice going up and down here. That would be if I wanted to record something onto this track. And then we have the 16 tracks that we had earlier on in arrangement view visible here. So these are basically just 16 tracks and they all do the same thing. They all have the volume faders, they all have the mute buttons, solo buttons and record arm buttons. And then over here on the very far right hand corner, we have the master track, which is the master volume control right here and master panning. So that's the bottom half of Session View. So this is pretty typical. There's nothing really revolutionary about this. It's the top half up here, which is what really makes Ableton Live unique. In, and, and this is what Session View is really all about. So the best representation for Session View is the grid, which you can see right here. That's me just highlight it, highlighting it with the mouse. And the way the grid works is we also have vertical axis and a horizontal axis. So in the vertical axis, it really is pretty much the same as with the bottom half. The vertical axis represents each track. So here we have track one audio, track two audio. So this could be your vocals, this could be your guitar, this could be whatever other instrument. And then we have this part of the grid, the vertical part. And what we can do is we can record clips, which is the basic musical building block in Ableton Live, which if you remember, over here, it said it right here, the basic musical building blocks of live are clips. And here you can see the session view with different clips. So this would be the drum part number one, drum part number two, and so on. And here's the bass and pad sound. Like I said before, the arrangement view, you would usually start in one place and just record all the way through the track, traditionally that is. But within session view, what I can do is I can just record a one bar loop and instead of it stopping once I get to the end of it, like it most likely would in arrangement view, it will just keep on continuously playing over and over again. If time was to be linear in arrangement view, it's circular in session view. Now, like I said, this might not quite make sense right now. This is all very theoretical, but it will start making sense very, very soon from the next module onwards when we'll be working within these different working environments. So like I said, the vertical aspect of this is the track. And then we also have a horizontal axis, which can be triggered from right over here. And the way you have to imagine the horizontal axis is this is where we will be building different sections of our track. Let me just rename this to intro. And then this part might be the verse. This might be the bridge, the chorus. So then everything within this horizontal line right here will be part of the intro. And then everything in the second horizontal right uh, line right here would be the verse and so on and so forth. So like I said, we have the vertical, which is the track. 
and we have the horizontal, which is the section, or as Ableton likes to call it, the scene. So if we go back into the Ableton manual, at the very bottom of part three of chapter four, it says, the arrangement view and the session view interact in useful ways. One can, for instance, improvise with session clips, in session view that is, and record a log of the improvisation into the arrangement for further refinement. So that is actually going to be the process that I will be teaching you throughout this course. This is something you might want to reread again and again until you kind of understand what it's saying. Let me just go over it with you one more time. The arrangement view and the session view interact in useful ways. So that means they're not separate from one another. They are actually interjoined. And one can, for instance, improvise with session clips and record a log of the improvisation into the arrangement for further refinement. Pretty much the entire course is summarized within this little paragraph right here. Now here's a quick little bit of interesting trivia. The whole reason Ableton Live is called Ableton Live is because the two founders of the company, they literally wrote this piece of software to perform live because back in the day, you know, in the early 2000s when Ableton Live came out, you had your Logic and your Pro Tools, but these were all very much studio recording software programs that were meant for the studio for, you know, recording engineers who were going to be recording the sessions. And they didn't really have the possibility to take that up on stage and work with it in a live environment. So they actually wrote this piece of software and they created it for this very reason so they could have different parts of songs loaded into scenes, which are, you know, the horizontal parts that I was talking about right here. And that way they could sort of improvise their way through entire uh, arrangements of songs that they had produced and do it on the fly in an improvisational kind of way. Hence the name Ableton Live, because it was made for live musicians. But it became apparent very quickly that this wasn't just a great tool for working with in a live environment, but for creative musicians in the studio, because it would allow you to compose and gather ideas, evolve them, and record them into the arrangements. So that's just a quick overview of both of the workspaces, session view and arrangement view. Don't worry at all if you don't quite understand what I was talking about, because we will be diving in a lot deeper from the next module onwards, and we'll be working practically with both of these views, and then you will really get to understand how they function. Music